So I guess it's like coolest build is it you can see you know, on YouTube. I'm taking your owls. Cool, I think it's like most beautiful interaction in the game. So we can uh, pick up owls breaker and we can troll him and we can pick up him. Very cool stuff. Just as nice. And now we got four zombies. Hail and mesh adventures. It's me, the Spot King. Welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3. And today I present to you my new build for Oathbreaker Paladin. So, first of all, we need to choose our race. And just for role playing purposes, I will pick Draw. But Draw got additional nice features. Weapon training, just in case you will need proficiency with rapier, short sword, or hand crossbow. But spoilers, you won't need it as old breaker paladin with my build. And superior dark vision, so you can see in the dark up to 24 meters. And this will come in handy, like fey ancestry. You will have advantage on saving throws against being charmed and magic can't put you into sleep. But if you need like perfect race to min max your old breaker paladin, go for half orc. Just for relentless endurance and savage attacks. But today we're playing this dude. So subrace doesn't matter. I pick low sworn troll. We're picking class paladin, of course. And we're picking subclass, subclass of oaths of devotion. Actually, any oaths will work. You can pick whatever oaths you like. And how to be an oath breaker, I will explain just in a minute. But what does it mean? When you're picking your paladin, you just pick your oaths. And your oaths dictate what you need to do. So basically, if you're picking oaths of devotion, you need to protect weak and pursue the greater goods. And when you don't do it, you're basically becoming Oath Break. So for background, we begin Soldier to have nice intimidation checks mostly, and Athletics checks is very nice too. For ability distribution, we making this like all-in strategy. So zero into Dexterity, zero Intelligence, zero Wisdom. And we're going all-in into Strange, Constitution and Charisma. We are making plus two into strength and plus one into charisma. Our skill proficiency doesn't matter and just like that our paladin is ready to go into the battle. So for those of you who already watched my guides, I basically making this spoiler free guides. So my main idea is to just show you level 12 character in this tutorial area where you're just practicing and doing other stuff but to become old breaker i actually need to go and start the game so if you're interested only in level up and uh, building up your old breaker then i will leave time code and this time code will lead to the segment of the video when we already be become old breaker but don't worry there won't be any significant spoilers so you can kinda feel safe to just watch right now. So first of all we need to complete this tutorial. And after you finish your tutorial, you start your adventure in Baldur's Gate 3. And eventually you will find and eventually you will find this location Emerald Grove. So in Emerald Grove it's like big village you need to go straight forward then on the first turn, you want to turn left, go down, down the road, continue right, where the road go in, and then you will come across this door, this wooden door, shabby door. So you need to enter into this shabby door, and you will find here little goblin in the cage. So that's where you can break your oaths really easily and fast. And we can start dialogue as Paladin, so we kind of making our own judgment. And then we step between crossbow and the goblin. And then we use it our intimidation and we get advantage in these checks. Not advantage, but a nice proficiency. So let's roll. And we answer my reasons on my own. Then we speak with the goblin. Nobody sent us. And we will try to get goblin out of the cage. So while Tiflings went out, we closing our shabby door and just using our mace on this iron gate and do it a lot of times. Finally, you will break it. 
And now main part, you need to unequip your maze so you won't have it. Or even go into spellbook, into common and dodge all non-lethal attacks. So use this non-lethal attacks and try to attack this goblin. So you will start to gain your oath breaking stuff. This goblin is your friend actually and you kind of betraying your friend so you can attack her a lot of times and every time you will gain your Owl's Breaker minus 20. So Goblin will try to escape, Guards will hunt them down and we need to go to where we started. And at the enter of this village we got this treasure and we can just go and destroy his like ways for example. So when the lysing is not good stuff, we can offer him some gold if he have some gold. But most of the time he don't accept our gold. So while this will add to your oath break in progress, you can enter in fight with this traitor and basically use this strategy. He got very low movement speed, so you just shove him every round and run away. So he come to you with dash and you will just attack him. This way you will end this fight without even killing him. And sometimes it depends, maybe you already will break your oaths, maybe not. So one more place where you can break your oaths is actually when you go outside of this village uh, from Emerald Grove and go to the left. And just maybe you will find this place. This could be familiar to you, maybe not, but most of the time you will find this place anyway, because there's more stuff than just some tieflings. But we are most interested in these tieflings. So if we use this Oath of Devotion, we just uh, can go and try to sneak up upon these tieflings. Make sure to use Bless or Increase Your Armor class just before you do it, and just use Divine Smite from your sneaky attack. So that's my idea, you just need to sneak up and kill them. Or you can go interact with them and then kill them. And that was enough for me to break my oaths. There's a lot of ways to do it, but I found this most fast and easy way to do. And finally, when you're making this really bad, bad things, you will face this cutscene. Oath Breaker will come and greet you. So now all you need to do is to just uh, press on long rest and you will see this Oath Breaker in your camp. So you will talk with him and you either can pay him 2000 gold and you will still be able to play as your normal Oath, but you're here for Oath Breaker guide. So yeah, we're talking with him and saying that, yeah, we want to become Oath Breaker. So I'm ready, I want to become Oath Breaker. Just like that, we're becoming this interesting secret Paladin subclass. And so, we are now Oath Breaker level 3, basically. You still will get uh, Paladin spells that you can have, but you will get different actions. So most of Paladin actions, normal Paladin actions, will be like turn undead, and basically you'll fight with undead. <laughs> with Oath Breaker, you'll, find, you'll fight with undead, not versus undead. So that's kind of funny and cool stuff. And first ability that you will have is Spiteful Suffering. It will inflict 24 damage to the target on each turn for three turns. So basically it's it's 3d4 damage and your attack rolls and every other player attack rolls will gain advantage against this target. Very nice, very strong oath charge. But actual fun starts when you level up a little bit more. So, so first of all, let's level up a little bit more. Level three Paladin. And right now we will get additional actions. You will gain control undead. And this will allow you to control undead that you will face on your adventure. And dreadful aspect. And you will be able to frighten nearby enemies. But this uh, uses channel of charges and you don't have an, a lot of them. But they are recharging on short rest. So make sure to use them smartly. Additionally, these oaths will give you nice spells. For example, Hellish Rebuke. It's always prepare spell. This one is a reaction spell and if someone attacks you, you just react with flaming finger. And inflict wounds, very strong necrotic damage spell. So let's see this level 3 paladin in action. So as you can see, this dude just attacked us, so we're using our hellish rebook as our reaction to just attack him with our reaction. 
Next up, we can basically start with our channel O's charges. We don't see any undead and we don't need to frighten any enemy. So maybe we... It's a nice idea to start with spiteful suffering. Chances to hit is not too much. But still, if it's hit, it's a very strong spell. Sadly, it doesn't hit. So we can use Shield of Faith as normal Paladin spell to increase our AC to 18 with just basic armor. And again, we can uh, use this Hellish Rebuke on every attack on us. You can basically use your maze, of course, because you don't have a lot of spell slots. And don't forget, while you are a Paladin, you're still a Paladin. So you have this Divine Smite, which doing from 6 to 27 Divine Damage. So you can basically go and use this as your main attack. And just like that deal with your enemies but main fun begins when we level up a little bit more so let me finish our build so level 4 old breaker right now we're picking ability improvement and we improving our strength and constitution we get additional prepare spell but again what we need from spells and when we play in this paladin basically we need to shield of face and bless and we pick one of these so you either concentration on shield of face to increase our armor class by two, or you concentration on bless to give us bonus dice to attack rolls and saving throws. Next up, cure wounds if you need some extra healing, and that's basically it. You can pick heroism if you see some enemies that can frighten you, but basically you don't need any spells, so you can pick whatever you like just for now. And to continue leveling up to level five, of course. On level 5 as draw we will get spell darkness which you can cast but it's not most important spell for paladin especially for oathbreaker but again here don't need a lot of spells so you can pick whatever you like you can have branding smite to fight versus invisible opponents or you can have a magic weapon for plus one to attack and damage rolls it function Almost same as Bless, but Bless is better for attack rolls, and this is better for like stable plus one damage. And now we're going to level six. That's where things starting to change a little bit. Still, we don't care about spells. This is like best lineup we can have. We don't need to change anything. But right now we're gaining Hour of Protection, and if it's work correctly, it should give you Charisma bonus to seven throws of your full party. And this works on your parties that you will try to make when you're going into fields where some undeads going on. So next up we are level 7, still nothing cute new, but we get our action, Hour of Hate. So you and any nearby fiends and undead gain additional 3 to damage dealt with melee weapons. Hour disappears if you fall unconscious. So that's where your Oathbreaker starting to actually roll and play. And how to play him? just in a minute let me finish our build so level 8 paladin right now you can pick your feet and it's depending on what you want in your final build you can pick your ability improvement and have a lot more strength to have more damage or you can pick war caster i recommend to pick and war caster right now on level 8 to make concentration on spells easier so let's go our level 9 and on level 9 you get a lot of spells from level 3 and we definitely can use them so what spells we need elemental weapon and that's nice choice it's it's a weapon that have plus one to attack rolls and additional 1d4 damage of our choice so we got elemental damage and that's very nice concentration spell that's why we want war caster on level 8 Another good concentration spell that you will have is Crusader's Mantle. It will give weapon attacks of nearby allies 1 to 4 radiant damage for 10 turns. And what does it mean? It will give additional damage to all your allies, not only your party, but even your undead allies. So it's a nice spell too if you want to try it. Warden of Vitality is a nice uh, spell if you want to be like supportive paladin for your party, but you can pick it just in case of emergency most of the time you, you want to use it and revivify is nice spell so you don't need this revive spells revive scrolls sorry and you can just use your spell and let's go to our level 10 of course and on level 10 we get additional action aura of courage and we and our allies can't be frightened and it's permanent and it disappears if we falling 
So again, our build is uh, ready. We don't need any additional spells right now. We can go straight to level 11 and we get improved Divine Smite. So Divine Smite became stronger and we're going to level 12, of course. For level 12, we gain an additional feat. And as I told you, you can have ability improvement and plus two into strength. That's kind of most stable way to build your Oath Breaker. So let me show you how you can use this Oath Breaker in a game. So first of all, as Oath Breaker, you get access to this animate death spell. And that's level three spell, so you can, can just go and animate, for example, zombie or skeleton. Zombie specializes in melee combat, skeleton in range combat. So just guys who just fallen to us becoming the zombies. And you already got one friend. Next up, you need to decide on what you want to concentrate. So you want to concentrate, you can to concentrate on elemental weapon. Whatever choice you like. I like Chandor. So let's just concentrate on this weapon for our level 3 spell slot. And you need to pick one of the three auras. So aura of protection gives the protection with saving throws. It's not very good stuff. And as I told you, it's plus three, so it's coming from charisma. So it's working correctly. But very nice aura of hate. So you just use it and just look. So this skeleton sadly won't be affected by aura of hate because we need the zombie to have this available. So let's animate zombie from this dude. And now we have our zombie and we just use Aura of Hate. So all our nearby allies affected by the Aura of Hate and it's permanent. So the zombie doing plus 3 bludgeoning damage. And while we're still concentrating on our, our elemental weapon Shunder, let's go and find some fight. So basically all you need to do and just go and attack with your army of zombies. Just like that, the zombies is really nice and strong guys too. As Paladin you can use your normal attack or you can use uh, your basic smite, divine smite doing just crazy amount of damage because uh, we have elemental weapon, we have aura of hate, so this smite can do from 14 to 45 damage and even more because it's not calculating our, our aura of hate. So let's just do level 1 smite and as you can see we just inflicted crazy amounts of damage. But coolest part, now we got our next zombie. So let's go, bro. That's how you play. You find one fight and go to the next one. Fight just instantly with your army of zombies. Sadly, our newborn zombies uh, really die pretty fast. But still, we can use this zombie to attack our enemies. And basically how this works, you just kill your target and then any target that got hit by zombie, if this target will die eventually, will become newborn zombie. And that's our main idea of this build, to get this army of zombies and skeletons with us, keep concentration on our magic weapon and just enjoy this awesome damage from Ohus Breaker Paladin. We just need to take one hit with a zombie and finish this dude with our paladin. So we have now our newborn zombie and our paladin got additional attacks, don't forget. So we can use our divine smite on just another target and destroy him. We can attack with our zombie another target just like that. And with our newborn zombie, we can't control him, he's doing whatever he wants. And newborn zombies loses health every round, so make sure to keep them alive. But that's uh, like main loop and main idea on how you actually play this paladin. So when you're high level, this spiteful suffering is more likely to hit your enemies. And just like that, we already got our zombie party to three members. <laughs> so <laughs> they will go and take advantage on the hits when they hitting this dude. Because we just uh, put it, this dude under spiteful suffering. So he taking necrotic, necrotic damage. We don't even need to do anything because our band of zombies will finish him just as nice. And now we got four zombies. But three of them is newborn zombies and they will die eventually. So I guess it's like coolest build that you can see on YouTube. 
it's also Breaker Paladin. I hope you enjoyed this video. Watch other cool videos on Baldur's Gate 3 on the screen right now. And make sure to check the pin comment because there's more cool builds.